The socio-economic rights and accountability project, SERAP, has urged President Muhammad Buhari to rescind his assent to the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, 2020 and to send the legislation back to the National Assembly to address fundamental flaws, including deleting the repressive provisions of the Act, particularly sections 839, 842, 843, 844, and 850 contained in Part F of the Act and any other similar provisions. This was contained in a later signed by the organization's Deputy Director, Kolawole Uluwadare. Serap also urged President Buhari to instruct the Registrar General of the Corporate Affairs Commission, Garba Abubakar, and the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami San, not to implement or enforce the Kama 2020 until the legislation is repealed by the National Assembly and brought in line with the Constitution of Nigeria 1999 as amended and Nigeria's international human rights obligations. Joining us now to discuss the 2020 Kama Act is economist Bolaho Olujide. Thank you very much, Mr. Olujide, for joining us. The yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning to you as well. Now, we know the Act has elicited different reactions. For someone yet unsure what the controversy is about, explain as briefly as you can the issue of property, ownership, and the Board of Trustees, because these seems to be the crux of the matter, aren't they? Um, I'm, I'm not so sure if that is the most important uh, contentious issue uh, here. Um, the Act did not specifically uh, seek to repeal the existing laws on, on property ownership anyway. Um, but what seems to be the hottest uh, 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 part of the co contention is the uh, powers given to the, the CAC to be able to appoint managers for these NGOs, uh, and that includes the, the religious organizations. So you have a situation of contradiction in one part. Um, on one part, you say there are certain multi-layer steps that you need to take before you can appoint a manager. In another part of the same uh, act, you empowered the CAC to actually appoint a manager for this uh, institution. That, that's a contradiction. You also have issues about uh, 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 definition of nebulous terms, like public interest. If the CAC can define public interest, how will it define it without any specific guide in the law? Um, that, that is open to a beef because there's a, there's a lacuna somewhere there. Um, I, I, I think there is a genuine fear on the part of the NGO that if we do not carefully draft um, a, a law that requires a appointment of, um, of, a, 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 of managers, um, we might have a situation in which uh, a wrong manager might be mischievously uh, appointed for those, those institutions. I, th I think this is the hottest, this should be the hottest part of, of the contention. Okay, uh, the Constitution empowers uh, freedom of association in groups or, um, uh, you know, um, however we want to come together. Tell us about the options uh, groups, religious groups and NGOs can explore, in particular, the option not to register with government as a corporate entity and how this affects the issues around uh, secession oh, and donations they receive. Um, I, I am not sure that you can actually survive um, without any form of registration because the question will be how do you now have that separate entity kind of uh, situation? How will you be able to open an account with a bank uh, in the name of an organization that is not registered? Because one of the first things that the banks will ask you are the incorporation documents of that organization. Uh, the same thing will go to, you know, seeking aid, uh, seeking grants, you know, you want to be able to sue and be sued in your own name. How do you do that without registration? So within the Act, you can, you can incorporate, you can, you can um, register as an incorporated trustee, or you can be a company limited by guarantee. But a lot of people tend to run away from companies limited to guarantee because the conditions are more onerous. Uh, you have to have the ads on the general, endorse it, and all that stuff. So people, people don't particularly uh, go for that. The incorporated trustees are the uh, most 
uh, the easier path to getting registered as, as, as uh, an NGO. All right. Beyond the anger embedded in the condemnation of the act by groups like CAN, uh, some argue it's a deep mistrust of government misuse of such powers as is being granted by the act itself. Do you agree? You're right on the money. Um, the, the main issue is that distrust. If you leave a lacuna in a legislation like this, or you provide contradictions within the legislation, you might have a government that will be reasonable enough and will not abuse uh, 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 such, such a lacuna or contradiction. But you might also have a government or government representative who will exploit it for a negative purpose, for mischief, for abuse. And that is why it is not exactly proper to leave the drafting as it is for those relevant sections that we're talking about. Not because of today, but you never know what tomorrow will be like. Somebody might exploit deliberately those lacuna for the negative uh, 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 use. Uh, and, and, and that will not go well. Are there no checks in this act that might, you know, tamper that uh, power? Uh, there might be. Um, even in the, in the normal practice of law, there, there will be some things that are temporary. For example, if you have drafted an improper law, the courts will not allow you to benefit from your incompetence of drafting. So you might say where there are contradictions, the courts will interpret that contradiction in favor of the defendant. But the question is, why do we want to give room for all this legislation? When we can, in fact, make an amendment to the law in itself and avoid having to make the courts make all this determination by just having a properly drafted law in place. If there is a need for an amendment of a law, let's amend those relevant sections. As a matter of fact, the camera is over 600 pages of document. Uh, a, a, a pages document. We cannot say um, condemn that kind of a document because there are uh, some clauses that need amendment. If they need amendment, let's go right ahead and, 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 and amend those relevant sections. That, that, that would be my opinion. All right. There are instances, I mean, there's been some citation about some churches uh, that have been investigated and even indicted abroad, many with origin in Nigeria. And we also know that most of them comply with similar regulations uh, abroad. Uh, some, some of these religious leaders have been asked this same question. Why the vehement opposition here to such regulations, which a lot of persons uh, say that it's not as bad if it is to protect the interest of the people who are part of such organization, especially when it comes to money, property, and the likes? Well, um, what, one of the reasons is mistrust. Um, there, is, there is this mutual mistrust between government and this institution. Uh, some of the there might be an abuse of the process. That is one. Number two is a natural resistance to change. Now, we, have, we, are, we are in an environment where we're not used to public scrutiny of churches and church affairs. So when you suddenly bring up a law that seems to open up that space, there is expected to be a natural resistance uh, to, 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 to that kind of a law. And, and then we also have a situation in which um, it, 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 it will surprise a lot of people that when you go online, you they can see the account, they can see the annual report of their own foreign parishes of the churches, of their churches. So um, if, if, if I go to uh, uh, the UK I might, uh, online, I might see the account, the financial report of um, RCCG Jesus House, for example, or I will see the Winner's Chapel in, in the UK or something like that. Um, and, and there is no problem with that. So the question is, why don't we also want that here? Or is that what we are rejecting? Or what we are rejecting is just the issue of appointment of managers? Because in the real sense, there is need for more transparency in how NGOs are run in Nigeria, especially from the financial perspective. Um, the, 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 it's, it's a bit on the opaque side. And we have to remember that these are trustees who hold assets 
on behalf of the beneficiaries. Yeah, there are so many aspects to this conversation, really, because we know that even the board of trustees that they require to get uh, all the legalities done, sometimes are members of their families, are members. It's a one-man business uh, sometimes in Nigeria. So one would naturally expect these kind of um, opposition. Uh, but because of time, I want to take your quick thoughts on the threat to sue uh, by Sarah asking uh, federal government to rescind. Will the cumulative pressure from them and others, like the religious groups, be enough to sway government's decision and uh, push this act back to the National Assembly? Well, it's, it's within the right of Sarah uh, to go to the court, to let them go to the court. But I think beyond the issue of going to the court, what we should be thinking about um, is amending whatever uh, a clause we feel um, has not been properly drafted. It is not to take away the spirit of what the law seeks to achieve, which in my opinion might be transparency. You want this institution to be more transparent and more accountable to the beneficiaries to whom they are trustees. So if that is the situation, we must not lose sight of that. But whatever lacuna uh, or, or contradiction currently exists in the law as it is, we need to fix that. And, 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 and that is um, what, what, what how I think we need to do. All right, Bilaho, thank you very, very much, as always, for the insights you provide to the conversation. Thanks for having me. Have a lovely day.